five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Chief Tidwell, for being here with us today. Um, one thing I hear often from our rural and forested communities is a concern that the Forest Service staff, jobs, and offices continue to move further away from the rural areas that they represent and impact. Uh, more and more we see fewer agency boots on the ground, fewer personnel interacting with the communities that are most impacted by their actions. And when personnel live outside of the district and work remotely 40 or 50 miles um, from the forest, they have less knowledge about what's happening in the woods that they're supposed to be managing and in kind of what's happening in the communities as well. Um, the communities also lose, lose the diversity of their community and suffer economic impacts when folks live and work elsewhere. And we have some great Forest Service staff in our communities in the Mount Baker, Snoqualmie Forest in particular. Um, but I'd be interested to hear your thoughts and comments on this issue, which is a growing disconnect, and I think across our country. Well, I share your concern. Um, you know, it's one one of our benefits, I think, of our agency being decentralized, and where we have decisions made at the lowest level, that closest to the communities. And every time, I mean, it's been the history of the agency of of consolidations, but we go to great lengths to try to to minimize those. But as I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, the impact of paying for fire suppression, and this has occurred over time, it hasn't happened in just a couple years, but over the last really 15 years, has really had a devastating effect on, um, on our staffing levels. And it's resulted in where we've had to um, consolidate more and more offices, um, you know, at the same time trying to be able to keep our presence in communities. We go to great lengths that as each time there's this reduction, under my watch, I've made sure that all levels, the Washington office also goes down. We've uh, just completed a, um, efficient, some efficiency works where we reduced over $100 million out of our fixed costs to, to do everything we can to make sure we can um, you know, fund the staff we have out in the field. But this is uh, just another, I think, a reason why um, we we need to find a solution to the fire suppression issue, and um, I appreciate your support on that. But we're going to go to great lengths to try to keep our presence in all these communities. And even, um, I'd much rather see a reduction at the, um, at the other level of the organization and at the same time be able to maintain uh, the folks that are out there in the communities, the people that are out you know, doing the work on the ground. And so that's going to continue to be my focus. Thank you. Um, yeah, in terms of fire funding, I, I totally agree and understand we need to have a better solution with that. And in fact, in Washington State last summer's fire season included the wild, largest wildfire in our state's mm -hmm. history. And I know um, University of Washington estimates that you know wildfires in the Pacific Northwest will nearly double by the 2020s and nearly triple by the 2040s as a result of climate change. And and so we have. A, a tough road ahead of us if we don't do a better job of making sure that we have funding available too. And it impacts trail maintenance and other types of things that are so important to folks being able to enjoy the forest. Um, I, one other question I wanted to ask you was, um, some in the timber industry and in our communities have begun to explore cross-laminated timber. Yes. And um, I wondered if you could comment on the usefulness of this still developing technology and where you see its place in forestry and in the tim timber industry um, in the future. Well, the cross-laminated timbers, which our forest products lab worked to develop um, and, and pass all the tests. Um, one of the benefits of, of this, um, uh, uh, you know, this type of a, of a product is that we'll be able to, um, we're looking at being able to expand commercial buildings. You know, right now in this country, we're pretty well limited to about four stories at the most using wood. But with cross-laminated timbers, it has the strength. It meets all the heat resistant um, standards in this country. Uh, where we could be using buildings like going eight to nine stories easily. And we actually have um, the secretary commissioned a, um, uh, a competition uh, to get uh, some architectural firms working with engineering firms to actually um, uh, compete to see who would build a couple of examples for us. And we're actually working with Canada on this. They're, they're also interested in mm -hmm. too. So we have the first um, meal um, is going to be actually, I think, be in production um, by the third quarter of this year in Oregon to actually start to produce this. But it's another um, benefit of being able to use the small diameter material. 
We have markets for the saw logs, but there's so much of the smaller material needs to be renew, removed to reduce hazardous fuels, et cetera. And these cross-laminated timbers, they take this smaller material and they can use that to be able then to construct you know, beams you know, 30, 40 feet long. Um, they're actually stronger than, uh, say, natural wood is. And so um, I'm very optimistic that as soon as we are able to get a, some folks to build some buildings with this, that we'll be able to expand this market and be able to create another uh, use, especially for the smaller diameter material. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, my time's expired. I yield back, Mr. Chair. I thank General Lee. No.